Hi everyone, I'm Paige Abbott and this is your weekly recovery message on the topic of oversharing. There's a lot that could be said on this topic, but as I move forward, I'll share some important points and perhaps I can come back to this topic down the road because really oversharing relates to boundaries. Often, especially with addiction involved, there's a tendency to undershare so either hold in so much information that it prevents emotional intimacy from happening in relationships, or there's a tendency for oversharing. Often it's driven by this thinking that if I share absolutely everything, all of my ins and outs, all of my secrets, all of my past, everything, very early on in a relationship, sometimes even at the first interaction with somebody, then they can make the decision whether they're going to take it or leave it. So people think that this is a helpful way to seek out whether a relationship will be appropriate or not. But often what it does is it drives healthy and appropriate relationships away because this amount of sharing, especially very early on in a relationship, is just too much. So intimacy in relationships builds through slow, gradual sharing where we can check out people's responses. So it may mean very initially lots of superficial discussions. So getting to know somebody's preferences, how people spend their time, kind of more the superficialities of their life, the structure of their life, and sharing that from yourself as well having a conversation with people. So often people who tend to overshare may hijack or hostage take in a conversation. So they take over the sharing and don't really give the other person a chance to contribute, even to ask questions or to offer feedback. And often this is driven by fear and shame. So the underlying motivation behind that, whether conscious or not, is the thought that I'll just keep kind of railroading this conversation and then people don't have a chance to speak up and therefore the possibility of being rejected or hearing some truth is less. Of course, this isn't healthy or helpful and doesn't add to a quality of relationship. Again, it can put up a barrier in a relationship where the person on the listening end may feel resentful, overwhelmed, and not listened to. So they slowly or quickly pull away from participating in not just that conversation, but the relationship. So going back to this slow, gradual building of intimacy, once there's been some foundation laid and you start to see hmm, there's some potential for connection here, there's some commonalities with this person, then you may start to share a little bit more some of the details and more of the quote unquote secrets of your life. But again, this typically happens kind of one by one. Um, so testing out something that's not too near and dear to your heart, something that you have shared with other people before, and then getting a sense how that other person is going to respond. Also giving them a chance to offer up some of their own kind of deeper emotional thoughts, feelings, secrets, past, that kind of thing. So mutual sharing is a big part of building intimacy. And when I'm meaning intimacy, I mean emotional intimacy in relationships. This can play out in romantic as well as platonic friendships. Emotional intimacy lays the groundwork for physical intimacy. So sometimes oversharers um, may also apply in the physical realm. So oversharing may involve physically engaging with somebody very early on in the relationship before there is this foundation of safety and trust established. So the name of the game with building intimacy is to go slow and to check things out along the way. So to check out your own feelings as you're participating in this relationship and to share what's happening in the relationship with other people and get feedback from them to see if this sounds appropriate and if the pace of the relationship is moving along. Of course, addiction is the disease of more, so it tends to want to put the gas pedal down to the floor very quickly in relationships, hence the motivation for oversharing, but 
in recovery, hopefully you can recognize the value of kind of pulling back and coming to that place of just taking it slowly and recognizing that this is a one relationship in the context of other relationships that you have. So oversharing can really backfire with people while they think that it may improve quality of relationship or give you the information that you need about whether a relationship can move forward or not at the beginning. Actually, it serves the opposite. It can drive people away and it can slowly but surely push away healthy participants and healthy people from your life away from you. And what you may be left with is people who are maybe not as healthy in their communication or intimacy, who are willing to participate in this oversharing and maybe they're undersharers on the other side. So it allows people to hide um, in the relationship because even oversharers are essentially hiding. Um, they're hiding their true feelings, their true selves, because there's this dominance in the interaction um, that prevents intimacy and vulnerability. Hope that gives you some thoughts to think about. Reflect on whether you are an oversharer and maybe it's in certain contexts and not others. Or if you've been an undersharer, perhaps I can talk about that in a future recovery message. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.